Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Good evening. On tonight's show, Conversations Across Time, we have invited back our esteemed guest, President Lyndon Baines Johnson, Spartacus, gladiator and free man, and Queen Esther, one of two women only that have had books written on them in the Bible. The conversation across time will be a continuation of the discussion on the efforts and the obstacles to overcome oppression in each of their cultures. I'm Janice LaFlam. Enjoy the show. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Conversations Across Time, the television show that allows you, the viewer, to observe imaginary conversations between historical figures from the past. Um, we seek to give you information about these figures and we also want you to explore what if. Now, uh, tonight, the, my normal co-host, uh, Babette Joseph, is away on assignment and sitting in her place, and we're delighted to have the show historian, Mr. Mark Hoffman. Uh, Mark Hoffman is a history teacher, he is a member of uh, the Conversation Across Time ensemble cast. He's played many roles. You probably recognize him from some of those roles, Theodore Herzl, Charles de Gaulle. Um, he's, he's been here a lot, and he's been on camera a lot. So Mark, we thank you for agreeing to sit in as co-host tonight. I'm, I'm, I have big shoes to fill, but thank you to have me. <laughs> I, I thank you for being here. Seated next to, uh, to Mark is uh, Spartacus. Last week, uh, this panel was here, and, and Spartacus, of course, is a um, slave, gladiator, and military leader. And uh, most of you who watch this show will know that Spartacus led a revolt that essentially threatened the entire Roman Empire. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Spartacus. Seated next to Spartacus is Queen Esther. Queen Esther was the Queen of Persia, and uh, she became Queen of Persia in 473 BCE, before the Common Era. And uh, Queen Esther is credited with saving the Jewish population from a massacre that could have happened had she not interceded with the, uh, I guess, direction and insight of her uncle Mordecai. Thank you for being with us, Queen Esther. Thank you for having me. And seated next to Queen Esther is the 36th President of the United States, President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Uh, thank you for being with us, President Johnson. And, and you, your, your legacy speaks for itself in that anyone that is on Medicare, early childhood education, the NASA space program, uh, the war on poverty was, was all something that came from you. So thank you so much for being with us, President My Johnson. My pleasure, madam. Now, um, we invited this panel back because last week we had had a vigorous discussion regarding uh, President Johnson, your legacy, and Vietnam. And so what, what I would like to do, since we, we, I think we probably questioned you or cross-examined you sufficiently on Vietnam, and even though we have more questions and we will get to this, I'd like to ask, since you, are, you were a school teacher, and you were a school teacher, uh, of, you taught poor children, you taught Mexican children, and that, I believe that's where you developed your understanding and empathy for oppressed people. So what I'd like to ask in light of our past discussion when we challenged you on Vietnam and the fact that uh, your war on poverty and your great society perhaps was dwarfed by your interaction in the war on Vietnam, as a school teacher, how would you grade yourself in terms of your presidency? Well, ma'am, I would sincerely give myself an A for effort. 
Yes, Mrs. Parkas. Hey, you may snicker, and that is your right, but I sincerely wish for the, to utilize the federal government to, to alleviate poverty in, in our country, which, which I thought was, is, a, has be, is and has been, will always be, just about the greatest country on the face of the earth. And I wanted as many people as possible to share in this pro prosperity and to have the, and to have low income and poor people of all colors, be they uh, black people in the, in the ghettos and Hispanic people in the southwestern United States and poor white people in the Appalachian regions. So you, but the long and short of it is you give yourself an A. You for said efforts. An, you said an A for like effort, try. but we don't yes. grade on effort. We want, we grade on accomplishment. Because you so do realize that, that, that Mark and I are both school teachers. Yeah. I mean, yes, I, I might practice law, but I, I'm a school teacher to begin with. Well, then why didn't you grade him? Well, we I We want to grade, well, we will grade him. We will grade, grade him, grade but him, I want to know what he was going to grade himself. Yes. This is a setup. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you, you grade yourself an A. For effort, as if I tried most sincerely uh, to utilize the federal government to alleviate the distress of poor people and to give them the ability to rise in okay, society. Okay, we, we got you. Let me ask. Uh, but can Johnny read? <laughs> <laughs> I, must ah. say, I must interject here that uh -oh. previous uh, succeeding uh, uh, administrations failed to follow through on uh, the possibility of the Great Society, such as Mr. Nixon, who deliberately utilized uh, racial hostility and hatred uh, to, to attain votes uh, to uh, get re remain in office. I mean, well, pre listen, President Nixon. And at some point on this program, we will, we will discuss President Nixon and invite him here uh, to defend his policies. But I think his legacy is and will always be that he was forced to resign. I, I want to ask uh, Queen Esther, how would you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, how, would, how would you grade President Johnson? Well, after all the events that you have discussed in previous conversations, I would have to say that I don't think that you completed everything in full circle. I feel that there are certain things that you helped um, raise as far as helping to aid the poverty and um, creating Medicare and the food stamps and all those beautiful things that you did set in stone for. Thank you for that. But in the essence of coming around in a full circle, all the lives that were taken in Vietnam, everything that happened in the current effects, everything, Fair including enough. including the poverty, everything, when you take all that into perspective, who really won? I was there an actual person? Was there an actual side that actually won? Lady Bird. And if they did, who are they? <laughs> and you um, just said Lady Bird. It was Lady Bird. She won. <laughs> I must say, you are right, madam, that I mean, imagine if you would have gone about things in such a different way where all those lives could have been spared. I mean, that's a part of what I did for my people. Doing whatever I had to do, taking a stand, taking a fight. Now, no, I also, also, be. your highness, you yes. were repeatedly raped by your husband. To well, now I have to ask you, Mr. Historian, what is your definition of this word rape? Because it is unfamiliar in my culture. I must well, state, uh, Madam and uh, Mr. Hoffman, that men in uh, high position uh, do uh, arrogate for themselves the privilege of having their way with women, and I have seen it many times in my career, and I must confess Is that, that I have... that you have done yourself? I confess, Madam, that I have done so. Against their free will? I... So, President Johnson, your, your response is something that unfortunately is all too familiar. And that is throughout history, men have, men of power have always felt that they had rights and privileges to a woman's body. I mean, we're still seeing it right now. It might not be in the form of rape, but certainly in, with the uh, question as to men trying to legislate whether or not uh, women have the right to make choice 
regarding whether or not they will have children. So that, that's, that's, not, that's something that's still... That's not just men of power. That's, that's existed throughout recorded history in different places, not everywhere. No, and, and you but know what, you're, not, you're right about that. It's not just men of power. You're, you're right Spartacus about that. Spartacus is right because the poorest man in America in 1940 could never be charged with raping his wife. That's right. That, you, you, you're right. That is true, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That has, just by being male, many men think that they have power and, and that has been a, a false, shall we say, solace for them, for their inadequacies in other so, areas. So, in so I guess I would like to intervene and yes. say that during my education through my uncle Mordecai, you know, he taught me a lot about worldly views. And when I was going through um, the process of cleansing and purifying myself um, before I actually uh, met the king, um, and he had chosen me as his queen, I became very close with eunuchs. And through them, they had a political power that might almost, almost be considered a secret in some essence because they were almost the walls of the, the royal court. And the, the eunuchs, of course, were, were men who were in service to the royal court. That is correct. And the reason that they were trusted around the women and around the harem and the queen mm -hmm. is because they had been mutilated and were not therefore interested in sex. I mean, they had been physically altered so that they would not be interested in having sex. And I can understand how they would become very powerful. Yes, that's correct, because through their knowledge, passing that on to me, I had time to prep myself in a way that I guess this word rape didn't exist in my mind. But you, you had no love for your husband, the king. You do you, not you, know that. You do not know if I have love or not for my king. Did you? Yes, in fact, I did. It might not have been deep compassion or, or the true deep of love, but I still had an essence of love for him and what he was doing. And the and fact that he honored me and he didn't behead me. So, and he saved your people. And he saved my people. Which is so why I would do that over again, time and time again. So I time give you an A+. Plus. There Thank we are. Okay, so now we're going to take a break and come back and uh, ask Mr. Spartacus how he would grade his fellow panelists and, and how he grades himself. So uh, please stay tuned. And uh, after the break, we'll come back and, and have that conversation. Grade them. Dead. 
Well, that, to be sure. <laughs> I guess that's a D, right? <laughs> that's, is that the Americanized spelling? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let, let's ask this question. Let's ask uh, President Johnson, how would you grade Mr. Spartacus? Well, like, I would uh, give Mr. Spartacus an A for effort. However, you keep giving people effort. <laughs> to what, what happens to the actual accomplishments, Isn't Mr. Johnson? I'm, I'm getting to that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hoffman. Please bear with me. Isn't there a word for that uh, in education now? They call that a uh, grade inflation. Yes. Yes. A grade yes. Inflation. Or a curve. Uh, uh, yes. Please hear me out, ladies and gentlemen. I I believe I deserve the courtesy as I am the president of the United but States. Most respectfully, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Spartacus, you started out uh, as a slave leading a revolt of gladiators and slaves in ancient Rome, and was not the no, effort not. you, uh, sir, please. I started out as a baby. It's an important distinction. Yes, yes, but p please bear with me, sir. Uh, and your attempt was to uh, uh, convey your fellow slaves in the slave army to return to your home nations, is that correct? Yes. Yes, and you did sincerely, truly uh, caused a fright in the Roman society and with your slave revolt, uh, the, with the fear that other slaves might join in the revolt. However, one of your generals, I believe his name was Crixus, uh, uh, instead of... He uh, was a general, he was a loud mouth. Yeah, well, one of your subordinates. <laughs> and he, uh, instead of... Con Continue with your plan to return to your home nations, like in your case, Thrace. He wanted to con uh, double back to Rome and continue uh, plundering the countryside, uh, which serves no, which you did not, at that point, you degenerated from an army of freedom fighters to just another gang of bandits that. Did, that, uh, he gets a higher grade site. than you, President Johnson, because he he organized the slave army. He could have accomplished his goal. But he, he failed to do so. So sir. did you. So therefore, don't don't so get on his case. Sir, you you Mr. Hoffman, worse than he please. Did. I am the president. I don't care. Who I you will are. assert my authority, sir. Please bear you with can't me. You can assert your authority when you're talking out of your uh, what you call it? Posterior. <laughs> yes. Out Excuse of me, but I would. I'm afraid, Mr. Spartacus, in, I would have to give you a D. Be. Well, and, if you give him a D, then you, got, you have an F, because he was much more successful than you. How so, sir? Well, you, you wasted the country's treasure in Vietnam. The war on poverty, we still have poverty. Now, we have good programs, but by the same token, it could have been much better. Millions of Dollars were lost in Vietnam that could have been better spent. And where would the country be if you had had the Cuyunis to make a tough decision about Vietnam and not worry about the first president to lose a war? If you were sincere about the war on poverty, you would have gotten out of Vietnam, focused on civil rights and poverty, and you would have an A plus and you would be on Mount Rushmore someday. I want to ask this question. This, 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 here, here, this, let's do this. Today, this nation, the, in fact the world, is faced with a tremendous crisis with a group, a terrorist group that plays by no one's rules, and that's ISIL. If you were advising President Obama today, what would you advise President Obama regarding ISIL? And ISIL, of course, is the, is, is the terrorist group that is responsible for beheading two journalists. They've beheaded many people. I think we only started to pay attention when two American journalists were beheaded. But what would your advice be to President Obama today? I would advise President Obama to take the course he is currently on. That, it, that would be to the airstrikes that there's uh, deteriorating ISIL, but uh, no direct uh, combat forces. And I made the terrible mistake of trying to prop up the regi regime in Saigon, which had no connection with uh, the South Vietnamese people. And I confess, 
I plead guilty to that. So, 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 so I want to make sure I want to make sure we understand this. Your advice to President Obama would be to not do what you did. Not because I mean it's a myth that there not be boots on the ground because there are boots on the ground right now in in uh, in, in the Middle East. I mean we are fighting a battle in Iraq and I it's sort of crazy because this is a war that seems to never end. But so your advice to him would be to not follow the path that you did in terms of escalating the conflict that I guess will eventually be named a war in Iraq That's against correct, ISIS. Madam. That's correct, madam. The, the fate of the Iraqi people must be left to the Iraqi people. And I'm sorry to say that the, the fate of the Vietnamese, Vietnamese people should have been left to the, to the Vietnamese people. I confess that was That's a terrible mistake on my part. Okay. Thank you, President Johnson. And you know, now I, I respect you again. Yeah. I mean, because that, that says a lot that you can sit here today and be able to admit to that. And I, I'm, I'm also uh, interested in how you feel that perhaps President Obama should take if you were advising him, your advice to him would be to not escalate in Iraq. That is correct. I would like to ask Spartacus the same question, since he yes. kind of was on the other side, and uh, from the Roman point of view, he was a terrorist and a rebel. What would you advise President Obama, knowing that you rallied your troops around you because of their hatred for and the oppression that the Romans inflicted on you and your families? What would you advise him? Well, my advice would be similar to <coughs> President Johnson, if only <coughs> the, uh, the biggest difference would be the justification. You see, President Johnson and numerous presidents and world leaders throughout history repeatedly have fallen into one of the classic blunders. Most the the most commonly known is you never get involved in a land war in Asia. I have but learned that. Uh, only slightly also. less well known, which speaks to my success with the small force that we rebelled with, is never go in against a Thracian when death is on the line. <laughs> gotcha. So essentially, my advice to President Obama would be to not get involved in a land war in Asia. Mm -hmm. In historical hindsight, Mr. Spodikas, I concur. My predecessor, Mr. Kennedy, was advised by General, I by General MacArthur to not get involved in a land war in Asia. And Mr. MacArthur cannot be accused of being a pacifist or a one of our greatest military leaders. And General de Gaulle also advised against going into, uh, going into Vietnam. He, he, that, that was, and that was sound advice, which was, I, but see, I, I'm one of those people that sort of suspects that that might have been the end of President Kennedy. That might have signaled his end, because at the time of his death, it's, it's known that he was actually contemplating withdrawing from Vietnam. There was that. Uh, you got to be belief. careful when you want to pull out. It's a, uh, it's a dicey situation. Once you've penetrated that far behind enemy lines, trying to withdraw at that point, it's a very complex operation. However, I must point out that the CIA, in collusion with the Kennedy administration was attempting to overthrow the government of, of the Diem government and his uh, brother. Oh, they had him and assassinated, they, but. They were assassinated they, yeah, with, him, the collusion, assassinated. with the collusion of the CIA and, the, and Mr. Kennedy monitored the situation uh, thoroughly. What's interesting is we, we, we cannot overlook the fact that the CIA colluded to overthrow the uh, duly elected president of Iran and put in the Shah. Well, Iran, of course, is, is, was called Persia in <laughs> Queen Esther. And look at the problem that happens today concerning Iran 
as a result of the CIA interfering and doing away with a democratically elected president. So I, I, I get you, I, I, I understand. And, and that's, that's one of the patterns that we see repeated throughout history. And that's one of the things we discuss here on this show. Yes, and another case, as to my re recollection, the overthrow with the help of the of the CIA, of the duly elected government of Chile in yeah, 1973. Orlando. So here we are. Here we are. And, and I, what that leads us to, and because we, of course we're, we're winding down with this show, but it, it's, it has demonstrated a pattern that happens in this country in terms of the power brokers and what they do. And maybe we need to look at ourselves and examine our motivations in terms of, of how we end up where we are. So while we've raised more questions than, than, than we've answered, I think those questions are something that, uh, that's what makes this show what it is. Because we invite our audience to think about history from a different perspective. So I, I so much enjoyed having this panel tonight. Uh, I do, Mark, I thank you so much for sitting in. You, my you pleasure. did a wonderful I enjoyed job. It. I enjoyed it immensely. And, and Mr. Spartacus, thank you again. And Queen Esther, lovely Queen Esther, thank you so much. And we look forward to maybe having you back at some other time. I would love that. Thank you. And, and President Johnson, I want to say thank you. And I want to say thank you on behalf of myself, and, I, and Mark did allude to it earlier, because you are able to sit here and say that you know that it was a mistake and that makes your legacy because you did some great things and that makes your legacy so valid and valuable and you are a president that just has not really been given credit for all that you've done and one thing that makes me understand why you were such a do-gooder in terms of getting so much done is that you're able to sit here and say i was wrong and we just don't hear that anymore. So thank you so much, President Johnson. Thank you, ma'am. To maintain my integrity as a man, I must admit that I was wrong. I have to do that. And I think I, on behalf of the panel and, 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 the, and the viewing audience, thank you for appearing here and thank you for making that admission. It makes us feel a little better. And so uh, once again, this has been Conversations Across Time. Please join us next week for another interesting, um, entertaining episode of Conversations Across Time. Thank you. Conversations Across Time. Conversations Across Cross Time. Conversations Across Time. Conversations Across Time. Conversations across time, conversations across across time, conversations across time, conversations across across time, conversations across time, conversations across across time, conversations across time. Conversations across time, conversations across cross time, conversations across time, conversations across time, conversations across time, conversations across cross time, conversations across time, conversations across cross time, conversations across time, conversations across cross time, conversations across time. Conversations of Cold
hope you join us for Conversations Across Time. It's uh, an idea that has been germinating for a long time, and I believe there's something for everyone. It's education and entertainment.